Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on clinical SAS programming. So in this video, we will see how to easily remember variables in Adam VDS dataset. So if we are following CDISC standards, so we have the analysis data sets model which is Adam. So this data set uh, Adam analysis data model has three standard data set structures. One is ADSL which is subject level analysis data set and the second one is BDS which is basic data structure and the third one is OGPS. And the record structure prescribed for BDS is one record per parameter per time point. So we will now see how to remember variables uh, in a Adam BDS data set related to vital signs. So the same concept could be applicable for any BDS, but I am taking vital signs as an example. So here, so let's assume that vital signs of systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure and pulse rate are being collected. So if we will be able to remember majority of the variables, if we can answer four questions. So who, which is which subject and then what is being measured, whether it is systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure or pulse rate and then what is the result. So what is the systolic blood pressure for that assessment and what is the diastolic blood pressure for that assessment and similarly for other tests. And then the next question is when was it measured. So on what date, what time or what visit it is. So now let us try to identify the variables that are related to who. So we know that every clinical trial will be given a unique identifier uh, by the sponsor and that will be stored in a variable called study ID. So the first variable is study ID and then we have a variable to store the unique subject identifier. So that is U sub JD. So every subject would also be given a unique subject identifier and that information would be stored in U sub JD. And then subject would be participating in a particular clinical trial at a specific site. So we have a variable to store the information related to the site in which the subject is participating in that trial. And then we have a variable called sub JD which is used to store the subject identification number which is unique within the study and the difference between U sub JD and sub JD is that if a subject is participating in more than one clinical trial so uh, in a submission which means if we are going for approval if there can be multiple clinical trials conducted and all the results of them could be uh, submitted within a single package so if the same subject is participated uh, has participated in more than one of the studies the u sub jd value for that subject has to be common across all of the studies in which he or she participated within that submission but whereas sub jd it can it has to be unique only within the study and this can vary from uh, different studies and now comes the next question what is being measured so we have discussed about the examples of systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure we need a variable to store that information whether uh, that particular row in a data set corresponds to which of the tests so in adam we have three variables basically to store the information related to the parameter the first one is our param cd which is used to store the coded version which is a short version or the abbreviated version of the test say for example for systolic blood pressure we use a short name of sysbp to indicate the it is systolic blood pressure that coded value is stored in a variable called param cd and then the full text of that parameter would be or the test name would be stored in a variable called param and sometimes what happens is in the final tables or listing that we generate we may have to order the parameters in a specific way say for example if you want to display the pulse rate first and then followed by systolic blood pressure and by then diastolic blood pressure in the report for that purpose we may have to create a variable which is a numeric variant of this param cd and param so the three variables that can be used to store the information which is related to what is being measured is param cd param and paramen and then next comes our what is the result so if we are measuring systolic blood pressure there would be a number associated with or a result associated with it so what are the variables that will be used to store this information in adam we have in adam bds structure we have two core variables to capture the result variables the first one is 
a val so which is analysis value so and if the uh, associated result for any test is a numeric result so we use the variable eval to store it and if the associated result for any test is character we use the variable eval c so for example if the uh, result of a test comes like normal abnormal uh, maybe the best example could be like uh, maybe yeah, let's consider like if the result could be character like positive negative or trace so we'll use with the variable evalc to store the such information so and then next comes the question when was it measured so we have a set of variables like when was it measured so the date when it was measured we will use the variable adt to store that information if we are collecting time as well we have a separate variable for it so that is atm so the time of collection is stored in the variable atm and if we have to report both date and time in a single variable so we'll use the variable named adtm so adt atm and adtm are the three date and time related variables for the question when was it measured so for every uh, the assessments would be performed at either scheduled visits or unscheduled visits so we uh, every date would be an associated with a particular visit so the information related to the visit is stored in a variable called a visit and that we have a numeric version of the visit variable a analysis visit variable that is a visit n so a visit a visit n are the variables which are used to store the visit associated with a particular collection and now uh, in clinical trials we know that we always try to compare so what was the result before we started giving our test drug and what has happened after the test drug which means that we are making a comparison between prior to treatment and post treatment so or during the treatment so for that we need to identify the record which will be used as a comparator so we call that record as a baseline record so out of so the all the records which are collected could be like there can be some results collected during uh, prior to uh, treatment start so that we could use that as reference and then we will have some collections which are uh, after starting our treatment so one of these record could be used as a baseline so for our comparison so the record that would be used as baseline would be flagged as y in a variable called ablfl so we have a variable called ablfl to store the or to indicate that the record is a baseline record so we will also have the result associated on that ablfl is equal to y record so which we want to populate it across all records of that subject and parameter so that we could quickly compare the analysis result and the baseline result so we have variables parallel to eval to store the baseline value which is for eval the parallel variable for baseline result is base and for eval c the parallel variable for baseline is base c and now so whenever we go for a test we always get this question so is this normal or not so is the result normal or not so if our, if we have to say whether the result is normal or not so what do we need we always need the reference range so there will be an associated lower range and upper uh, value so we have a variable called anr low to store the lower limit value and a variable called anr high to store the upper limit value and the comparison of eval with anr low and anr high so we will get the values like whether the result is low normal or high so we have a variable called anr ind to store the result uh, comparison so the anr and will have values like low normal or high so that information would be stored in this so if we want to create a parallel version of anr and for baseline so we can use a variable named bnr ind so bnr ind is parallel to anr and so we now 
have identified most of the core variables that would be uh, present in BDS dataset. We'll now just cover a few more variables. So if we have analysis visit windowing in our study, so there will be few additional variables in our BDS data set. So for every visit, so it should be supposed to happening on a pre-specified day. So for example, month one visit should happen 30 days from the start of the treatment. So that information we call it as target day. So we use a variable called aw target to store the target day or the planned day on when which that visit should have happened. So aw target is the variable for it. And similarly, our protocol sometimes allows for some plus or minus few days around that target days. So for example, if the target day is 30 and if plus or minus seven days is allowed for that month one visit, so we'll end up having 23 to 37 days. So there is a lower limit associated with that analysis window for that visit of month one. So we use the variable aw low to store that information. And for the upper limit, so we use aw high. Sometimes that number could not be described exactly using aw low and high. It may have some character string uh, range. So we can use aw range variable to store that information. And then we were saying that uh, the aw target, aw low and aw high would be used to store the values like 30, 23 and 27. So, but we uh, review should also know like what does that 23 or 30 or 37 mean? So here in this case, so we are saying that we are describing the visit window in terms of number of days. So we have a variable called awu to store the units uh, for the numbers which are stored in aw series variables. So awu is for units. So sometimes what happens is we would be interested in seeing the difference between so here we if we have ADT we can also create the associated analysis day variable which is ADY. So sometimes we would be interested in seeing what is the difference between the uh, actual day when that visit happened and the target day when that visit was supposed to happen. So that difference can be stored in a variable named AWT diff. So now we have identified few additional variables related to visit windowing if it is applicable. So we have now identified majority of the variables that would be used in an Adam BDS data set and the logical flow that we have used is who which is which subject and what is being measured and what is the result and when was it measured. So thank you for watching and keep learning.